Welcome to RGBA, where 24 bits was not enough. More on that in a minute. RGBA is looking at the new gadget, technology news, discussing their impact on our lives with the occasional coffee and productivity discussions. This is episode number 20. My name is Alexandre Valia Lagasse, and I'm joined by my co-host, Tyler Minard. <laughs> So, before starting the show, uh, just a few words on the new name, new brand, new design. Uh, during our respective vacations, we were out of the country having fun uh, one after the other. And when I came back, just a few weeks before Tyler, um, basically I wanted to uh, get my hands on a sp- the domain name just for the, the podcast. And rgb.fm was just purchased by somebody else a few weeks ago and has those things go when you contact the guy for uh, for the how much does he want for that domain name he was basically asking for 25 grand <laughs> so maybe not yeah maybe not so he, he has an idea of something he wants to do with the domain but he's not sure so anyways so then i said okay so rgb red green blue what goes well with rgb I said, oh, yeah, there's also the alpha channel, which is the transparency added to any RGB color on the web so and on any uh, graphic editor. So I, I said, okay, RGBA, that makes also that makes sense. And it was available. So we now have RGBA.fm. So that's our new domain for the website. Right now, all the old shows are uh, hosted there and the old website redirects automatically to the same page on the new website. So RGBA needs a new it's a new name, so it needs a new logo. So I've redone the hard work of the show, uh, the show artwork, and I have also uh, wanted to try something for a while. After listening to Cortex and seeing how Mike Hurley also puts the podcast episodes on YouTube, I figured there must be a way to do that. And after talking with him, he said that they were actually like taking a lot of time to do and to upload because it was generating like a couple gigs uh, of file each episode. So what I thought is that there must be some better way to do that. And what I ended up doing is I ended up uh, using FFmpeg to create a movie out of the audio file and a PNG image like he was doing. But instead of using uh, not Logic, uh, what's the Final Cut? Using FFmpeg, I can specify how many frames per second I want. So basically what he was doing was doing like the usual 24 or 30 frames per second. But by dropping that to one frame per second, I ended up with like uh, files with sizes between 30 and 60 meg. So much, much easier to to manipulate and to upload. And also I, I said, since they're smaller, why not go bigger? So I went 4K with that. So you can now go onto youtube.com slash C slash RGBA FM. For our all our, our episodes are already uploaded, all our 19 episodes and the trailer. So you can also listen there if you prefer. It's also easier to stream. Yes, also, yeah. If Since you're the in, files are smaller. Exactly. So it takes a couple seconds and the whole file is downloaded, even in 4K. So, yeah, new website, new design, new name. Hopefully you like the change. Uh, I'm gonna still going to post links, uh, link posts from Ipster Pixel to the episodes. So if you were following like that, uh, you will still be able to find them. Um, eventually, I'm going to be done with my own personal website and also do link posts over there. So, yeah, that's about it. And you, Tyler, any website uh, for your domain eventually? Uh, don't think so. Not planning on it. No. Maybe, but it's not something I know. All right. So since we last talked, which was, uh, when was that, like mid-July? It's almost a month and a half ago. Yeah, something like that, because I was out three weeks, then you were out two weeks. Yep. So it's a good five weeks with no shows, maybe six with the time we take to uh, edit the show and upload. So basically, we were hoping for a September 7 event. We were right. Well, actually, I was right. I put my dollar on seven, which was a, the, sh- the the episode name of the episode nineteen. And so you owe me a dollar. <laughs> it was really. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. You can listen back. 
Oh, I, no, I trust you. <laughs> I don't need to go back. Yeah, I'll the, trust you. Yeah. So basically, the iPhone 7 was announced. Uh, everything we were hoping for came up. Uh, still no new Max. But anyways, we'll, we'll just go through the event quickly because uh, most of you probably already heard about it. Um, wanna, do you want to start? Uh, you want to go? You want to go through the whole event? So the event started with uh, our good friend Tim Cook uh, doing a little sketch inside that uh, karaoke TV show that uh, takes place in a SUV with uh, Mike Corton, G- Gordon. Not sure how you pronounce his name. Corbin. Corbin, yeah. So he basically did a little sketch there. Uh, and Farrell, Will- Farrell Williams. So- What's the name of the show? Uh, Car- something karaoke. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna <be> push. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Oh. I think it's car car karaoke. Yeah, car karaoke or something like that. Whatever. So he basically sings a One Direction song with the guy, and then they made it so that he exits the the car and gets into the studio, and then there he appears on stage. So that was the funny intro. Carpool karaoke. Yeah. Yeah, carpool karaoke, right? Yeah, so then we are graced with a bunch of numbers as usual. So 140 billion apps downloaded uh, and then a few more numbers and then something we were not expecting at all. And uh, Mario will be coming to iOS. And well, explain how they announced it. Yeah, well, there was something that said, uh, Tim Cook said, first of all, that some company uh, start on mobile, on iOS, and perhaps they go somewhere else, but the important thing is that they start on iOS. So, okay, I was expecting some other company, but then you just see Mario's face appear on the big uh, screen. And then, if that was not enough, we actually have Shigeru Miyamoto, which is the creator... Uh, of Mario, Zelda, Donkey Kong, and everything that comes on stage to explain what the game is about and the gameplay mechanics of the game. So for those of you who follow this, the news about uh, Nintendo and their recent endeavors and mobile platforms, they recently said a few months ago that they were going to embrace mobile and uh, well, as a platform, and but not just as a dumping ground for their uh, IP. They're going to make games that are specific to mobile, that are adapted to mobile, but that will be used to attract new customers to their platform. So they're not going to use that as a end result kind of project, but more as a, here's a little candy. You have fun with that. You like the IP. Look, there's more games on the Wii console or the the next uh, console that is going to be announced probably uh, very soon. So, yeah, it's a... Sing a simple game. It's just a runner. So Mario goes from left to right autom- automatically, and you always you only tap to jump. There's going to be multiplayer. There's going to be challenges. Uh, the there was also some little uh, discussion about the game would be a single one-time cost and not uh, a, like a, a subscription or not uh, in-app purchases. But in the, the app description it seemed more the case that it's going to be free with an app purchase to unlock everything. So this is like the most uh, popular way to do things nowadays because you, everybody can try your app and you don't like put a, a price uh, that prevents them from using it. So it's free and then you pay a little fee to get all the levels. Yeah, and there's also the, um, the app is already in the app store. And instead of having a buy or a get button, it's called the notify, I think. So that's yeah. the first two. Yeah, that's the first two. So you will can opt in to be notified when the game actually is released. So I'm guessing an app store notification. Yeah. So that that's cool. Uh, hopefully, you will be able to see that. Hopefully, not just for big developers, but also for indie developers. Right. <clears throat> And then we were graced with the uh, big update for uh, iWork Suite, uh, adding something very important for many people, the real-time collaboration. We will have to try that one day. 
and they also did a full demo on stage, which is something very risky. Yeah, because they were modifying the actual keynote of the uh, keynote. <laughs> mm -hmm. This can go wrong in a bunch of ways. <laughs> so then they go Apple Watch. Yes. They go through Apple Watch 3 again, presenting all the features like they did at a quick summary of what they presented at WWDC. And then they follow up with the watch, I think, right? Nope, they follow up with Pokemon on the watch. Oh, yeah, right. So, I forgot about that. If you I remember forgot, when I they... I thought about the whole Pokemon thing altogether. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't catch any Pokemon in uh, in Europe? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't go hunting for Pokemon in Europe. <laughs> Me neither. In Europe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, um, when they announced the game uh, and it was got, it got released, you could pre-order on Amazon a device that would pair with your phone, which you could keep on your wrist, and it's going to vibrate and react whenever there's a Pokemon close or whatever. So this uh, Apple Watch app will be the same kind of thing. You'll be able to start your workout, do your workout, and they would count against your, your the distance you traveled in the game. So you will be able to hatch eggs more, more easily. Uh, for those who were doing workouts but were not able to use those kilometers they run or they, they drive, or then they drive or they, they cycle against their game, now they will be able to. And also, if you're just walking, you don't need your phone in your hand, your watch will vibrate when the Pokemon will be close to you. So Yeah, because the phone needed to be open all the time for it to count. Yep, the number of battery packs sold what, it <laughs> got up uh, quite uh, heavily in the, com in the past few weeks. So now I guess, uh, I think it's integrated with like a workout kind of thing. You're going to have to start a workout to start hunting for Pokemon or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, most probably. So then it's going to be integrated with all your exercises and all that. So that could be pretty nice. Yeah, And also when you walk past a Pokestop, it's going to automatically get the items for you. Right. So. Oh, really? You don't yeah. have to click on them? Nope. Everything's going to be automatic. Okay. Yeah. And then we got the Apple Watch. So they announced the Apple Watch 2 or Series 2, like they call it. Series too, yeah. Siri, yeah, Siri, Siri, Siri not yeah. Siri like the the assistant. <laughs> yeah. Series too, like they call it British uh, seasons. Exactly. Instead of calling seasons, they call it series. So the big so news. it's like yeah, it's like the rumors. Um, the casing hasn't changed. The physical thing hasn't changed, except for a um, a new processor, brighter screen, and. Water resistance. Bigger battery water and resistance. water resistance, yeah. yeah. And the watch is also bigger, just a one millimeter yeah, thicker. Yeah, a little bit thicker. Yeah, so... It's not going to be really noticeable to the... to like the, Just looking at it, but... Yeah. But the the other thing is that they did not just create a new watch, they also updated the first generation watch, which will be called Series 1. And it's the exact same thing, except for the CPU that got replaced. Instead of having this CPU that was announced like more than two years ago, uh, it's actually a new CPU that is not exactly the same as the Series 2, but much more powerful. So apps should be more responsive on the Series 1 too. Oh, and also on the Series 2, the GPS. Yes, integrated the GPS. GPS. True. Yes, so you will be able to leave your phone at home, do your running, take a new path, whatever, and you will be able to see the whole drawing on a map more easily. And also, um, it's water resistant, and they added swimming uh, workout capabilities. So it's it's easy. It's not easy. Sorry, it's um, it's going to be able to measure like how many strokes you've done and how the distance of your swim and all that, which wasn't possible before. Yeah, and for all the gadget geeks, there's also a little extra feature that once you completed your swim, swimming workout, you can actually see the speaker uh, would vibrate to eject any water that would be stuck in the casing. So the, I'll put a link in the show notes to a GIF uh, of that. You can see like the, the like if the watch was spitting. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's pretty cool. So because I of course it's, if it's it, if it's if it's in the water and there's water that gets in. Uh, you, the speaker would not react properly afterwards. So by doing that, you can rest assured that the speaker will vibrate properly the next time you get a, a, a sound out of your watch. 
I think it asks you to turn the crown or something like that for it to to spit out the water. Probably, probably. So for series two, we got also new bands, the Hermes uh, series band. They have three different uh, bands with the the special watch face. Uh, there's also a Nike branded uh, band that is black and green, and also a, a special watch face for that. Um, there's other things in terms of bands or. Oh, they they didn't announce new bands, but new bands are available on the App Store. Yeah, new it color. Wasn't, yeah. It wasn't mentioned on stage or nothing. And also, they replaced the edition, so there's no more uh, fifteen thousand gold watch, no eighteen, or yeah. whatever it is. Can you was eighteen thousand? Yeah, eighteen thousand dollars. It's replaced by a ceramic watch, and I think it's twelve hundred dollars in the U.S. Yes. or in Canada. I forget. So it's a bit more. It's a bit more reasonable. It's closer to the Hermes bands and the Super Dark Vader uh, <laughs> watch there. With yeah. the, the link bracelet in black and the, the stainless. Yes. So I'm I'm anxious to see that. It's not going to be in many stores, I'm guessing, but it must be nice, like ceramic. Well, you know, at, it's, at it's a, a nice material. At 1200 bucks, you can probably have it on try-ons. It's not like you it's... Think? Yeah. Do they have the Hermes on uh, trials? Yeah, I think they do. I think I never, you can try. I never it. ask. Yeah, me neither. But I'm pretty sure you could. I'll go tomorrow and I'll and I'll ask. I'll Perfect. take pictures. Yeah, perfect. You'll report back next week. That's your assignment. Right. right. <laughs> and then also another another yeah. thing they they didn't um, that they changed. It used to be the entry model was called the Apple Watch Sport. And then the, the like luxury model was called Apple Watch with nothing. And then you had the super high end called the Apple Watch Edition. They changed that. There's no more sport now. They just they differentiate by them by the uh, the casing. So aluminum or stainless steel. Yeah, which is the way that people were calling those anyways. Yeah, because then you... I have the Apple Watch, but Apple Watch, Apple Watch, and it, it wasn't working. So Yeah, exactly. They kept saying Apple Watch, stainless steel to differentiate it, different, differentiate it. Yeah, and because we also do that for any other Apple device. Like if you want right. the MacBook in rose gold, you're not going to call it MacBook something. And then with the color rose, it's the rose gold MacBook, the gold MacBook, the gold iPhone, the space gray iPhone. So it doesn't make any sense to call them with special names. That means not much. So after that, we finally got to see the iPhone 7. So Phil Schiller got on stage and just the, let us saw a little video that actually showed us everything from the phone. <laughs> yeah. and th Which is weird because usually they, they present the device and then they show you a video. Yeah. Yeah, they it always finish like, and we made a nice video, but they started with, we made a nice video at the beginning. Yep. So that was weird. And the main focus of the video was the new jet black finish. So we now have a shiny uh, black iPhone. And this process is quite special. It has to be polished and in some kind of material. And there's many, many steps. And that's why the, these are quite hard to get your hands on. Uh, even in the few minutes that they were available for pre-order, they were already reported to be like three to five weeks. So they had probably not many, not much stock of this model. Also, they're only available in the new 128 and one, one, uh, a 256 gig. Yes. So I'm guessing the process is a little bit more expensive. That's why they can't fit it in 32 gigs. Well, the, it doesn't work in margins and making yes. profit of the process and everything. Exactly. Of getting the thing, the finish. Uh, made in the we also have a new Taptic Engine with the new Taptic Engine API which developers will be able to use in their apps and uh, give you a vibration feedback for whatever happens with the app the 6S already had that but it's an upgrade right uh, well because yeah the, 3D touch yes it, it does have a, a Taptic Engine but it's smaller Okay. Now this time it's bigger and there's an API, so it's you will be able to get much more feedback from this uh, this way than before. 
because before it was used only for the vibration, so like notification alarms or whatever. But now there's an API for that, so anything in, while using the phone, you will be able to get a feedback. Yeah, the example everybody is giving is when you you set your alarm when you're scrolling through the the minutes or the hours to set it. Yes, there's like this feedback if it we were as if you were really turning some wheel, which yeah, some which dial had, of some sort. Yeah, which would have like little uh, nudges. It's like the Price is Right wheel. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Every there's a little nudge there. Dee, 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 dee. Come on down. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, Phil went on to talk about the iPhone camera. So basically, as we expected, as all the rumors and leaks uh, explained to us, uh, the new iPhone 7 has a better camera, and the iPhone 7S has a dual camera system. 7 Plus. Uh, 7 Plus, sorry. Yeah. 7S. <laughs> I'm such in the future. Next year, that's next year. <laughs> yeah, next year. Uh, both camera now, both uh, both devices now have image stabilization. Uh, the only... Uh, Little difference there is that the 7 Plus, the uh, zoom lens doesn't have the same stabil optical stabilization. It uses uh, another mechanism for stabilization, so it's not as precise as the regular lens. So three times the exposure, uh, image stabilization, a new sensor, of course, faster sensor, more efficient, uh, whatever we were expecting at each new revision. Uh, this time, Phil took more time to explain how how crazy fast and how crazy complex uh, capturing a photo and doing the processing on it is. He was reporting that it was doing what a hundred million operations per second. So yeah. yeah, quite quite powerful little chip they got there. Um, the flash now has four LEDs, two amber and two uh, white LEDs, and is of course more powerful. There's going to be new new APIs also for the uh, capture, the editing, so that's uh, better. Yeah, the, the raw pictures are going to be available. Yes, but only in an API, not in the Apple camera app. So right. that that's weird, but anyways, you could do stuff with that. Uh, even 500px released today, a new app uh, which allows you to capture in raw. And 500px is a uh, photographer's uh, social network, if you want, where they can showcase their best pictures, not like Flickr where you can upload like thousands of pictures. This one is more like upload your couple best shots you've got. And there's also a marketplace for paying members. So what this new app allows you to is to capture photos with your new iPhone 7 or 7, uh, 7 Plus and in raw format, upload it directly to their platform and offer them uh, to be sold on the store. And there's also a new feature that they're gonna add in the future, which is uh, people who are looking for a specific picture, uh, they're gonna send out requests for uh, uh, for what they're looking for. So for example, there's an office company who's looking for, uh, for, for photos of uh, guy wearing ties on a computer, well, you will get those alerts and you can take on the challenge, do the photos and share them with that person directly. So there's more chances that they're gonna purchase your pictures like that. So that's coming up in the next few weeks. So the next feature I think is the no headphone jack. That's a feature? Yeah, it's a feature. Oh, you it's a know? bug. <laughs> no, it's a feature. It's a feature, okay, yes. Uh, they explained this. I didn't really like he was talking about it takes courage to move forward and remove the jack and blah, blah, blah. I kind of zoned out. It was a bit weird. Yeah. And then uh, they also introduced air, what they call AirPods. So it's basically just uh, Apple EarPods, but they cut off the cords and they left a little stem. So it's just those little like Bluetooth weird things you're going to stick in your ear. Yeah, and doing the come. the courage thing. Well, it, it always depends on who you're, you, who's listening to you. Uh, for people not like us, maybe the courage thing would resonate. But for us geeks and generally people who are more technical, I was looking for more of a technical reason for that. Yeah, real reason, not yeah. just a marketing thing. Yeah, because of course it takes courage to 
do changes like that. It takes courage to implement any feature in any new device. That's not something we do not know. What is important is the reason behind it. And in this case, just by listening to the to Phil's talk, I was not super convinced. The part about the Taptic Engine being bigger now uh, for the new home button, which we'll get to in a second, um, needing more spaces, and that would push up the battery and shrink the battery, and the camera is bigger also, so it would shrink again the battery. We would get a phone with the same number of hours uh, as last year, or even less, because we still need the jack. But by removing the jack, you can push everything down. The Taptic Engine gets closer to the home button, the battery stays the same size, and there's still space for the new camera. So th for me, that is a technical reason. It's a technical challenge in those devices to fit everything, and that explains it. And for me, that's a great, good reason. But we only got that reason like a day or two after from a BuzzFeed article. So uh, he should have used that reason on stage because he had the shot where you see the Taptic Engine and you see that the jack is gone, but he could have gone into like more details about this reasoning. And for me, that would have made much more sense. Yeah, they didn't really address it. They just did this whole marketing PR thing, and it was weird. Just tell us exactly why. I'm sure there's a million reasons why they need to do this. They just didn't really explain it. Typical yes. Apple yeah. fashion. Yeah, so back to the AirPods. Yeah, so AirPods is a good idea. It's Apple at, at its best. Uh, basically, they took something that was wonky and they made it better. How? They made a special chip for that, the W1 chip, which is a new wireless chip that leverages probably a bunch of technology like Wi-Fi, NFC, and, and Bluetooth, of course, to make the pairing much, much, much easier. Uh, you just basically open the case, press a button, and they appear on your phone that is right next to it. And also, the pairing is shared across all your devices. So let's say you have you want your you're on your phone, you listen to music, you put back the little earbuds in the pack, you take out your iPad, you reopen the the pack, and automatically the pairing would be switched to your iPad. That's how I understand. Unless it's even easier than that, and you just start using the iPad, and the audio gets switched. Yeah, I think the auto gets switched um, okay. right away. Okay, so because it's it's supposed to be shared by by um, iCloud. Okay. Okay, so, so I think it's they just fixed. the original pairing with your Apple ID. Okay, so they fixed the pairing process, which is now super simple. Uh, we still did not have any real feedback about audio quality uh, and also latency. So these are two things I want to see because you know that with wireless headphones you have some latency some is very short some is very long depending uh, the easiest test you can do is like you told me today is to try the click keyboard uh, the click sound on your uh, virtual keyboard on an iphone while you have your your wireless uh, headset on which i tried with my bose qc35 and it was almost at the same time as the click so is pretty pretty good uh, some other pairs cheaper headphones will probably get maybe half a quarter of a second to half a second delay, which can be crazy annoying. And if Apple did some custom chip for the AirPods, maybe there's zero delay. That could be another reason why they did that. I think the chip is just for pairing. Aren't they Bluetooth anyways? Well, the official wording is that, yes, they're Bluetooth, but they also acquired a Bluetooth chip company a few years ago. I think a year ago or two years ago. And they were working on a better protocol that is Bluetooth compliant, but better. So maybe they kind of like added a layer on top of Bluetooth for their device. And that would make the quality uh, much better and probably help also in the pairing. So there's no official word on that, but that's my assumption. And they last five hours. And then you can put it back in the little tic tac box. And I think they charge in 15 minutes. They give you another two hours or something like that. Yes, exactly. Five hours is not a lot, though, I find. If I take, just for example, the flight I was on, I had my headphones on all, all along. And the flight was like seven hours. So I would have to take them off 
at some point. Yes, but you know, I don't really like those arguments because you don't fly every day. If you were I somebody, I work every day. Yes, I, put, I have my earphones on all day. Yeah, you never remove them to go to the bathroom or no, I not coffee. allowed. Not allowed. Not allowed. Okay, they no. stick to your ears with the uh, duct tape. Yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> no, they're so they're so non. Oh, okay, that's even better. Yeah. No, but I just find like, wh- how long do your headphones last? I know they're a lot bigger and there's a lot more yeah. room for battery, but yeah, put a, five hours is not is not very long. No, it's 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 quite quite small, but in the end, if you can recharge in fifteen minutes, get three more hours. It's not the bad the, the worst thing there is. Mine have twenty hours listening with the uh, noise canceling on and forty hours with the wire. Okay. So yeah, it's a, I charge them at most once a week, but usually it's more close. It's closer than every two weeks because. Around this time, I don't listen to music that often, so we're quite busy at work. So I usually put them on a few minutes during the day, and it's my commute in the morning and the and the afternoon. So maybe a total of two hours and a half per day. So that would easily bring me to yeah, twenty hours. Yeah, a week and a half. See, my commute is almost. Almost four hours. Wow. So I couldn't. That's long. Yeah, I know. Well, from leaving the house to getting to work, exactly, I think it's one forty, an hour forty. So, well, that's something. So I, I need to charge my headphones in during the day. Yeah, which is not a bad thing because you're at your desk anyways. So it's like with the iPhone. If you use the six or the success. And you don't have any battery case, and you use it in the morning and in the afternoon, like I do, uh, for watching movies or playing games. You won't have enough juice to get back home. So, but you're at your desk all day, so you could just plug it in. So it's not the end of the world, you know. That's why I never really bothered with the battery capacity of recent iPhones because it's good enough that if you have access to a wire sometime in the day. Even just for a few minutes at a time, it's enough to give you an extra twenty-five percent to fifty percent, and you can finish your day with no problem. Uh, even with my 6s Plus and the iOS 10 Beta, when the earlier one were using much more energy, uh, I just plug my my phone during the day, and I was able to finish the whole day with no problem. When my phone, when my six was new. I could go. I could go all day without, without even charging, without a problem. I'd finished a day with like twenty percent and eleven at night. But now, since last winter, it just fell off a cliff, and I have to charge it at noon almost because it's at like twenty percent. Yeah, but you have a battery problem. That's a bit different. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. no it really fell off a cliff. It's two years old now. Yeah. Something must have happened. Hopefully, it's, I think it's, it's the not cold. Note. Yeah, the Maybe batteries are like that. Cool. Yeah. And also, this uh, new W1 chip will be also included into the Beats Solo 3 wireless. And is there a second pair too? I think there's a second pair. But I think the Solo wireless things are already on sale right now. Okay. Yes, there's also the Power Beats 3, which is the uh, earbuds Bigger type. Ones. Yeah, with the hook on your ear, so when you train. Right. So Apple finally is leveraging their Beats acquisition with special products that is using their special hardware. So that's a first, and that's a good thing for them because they sell lots of those. And they have now if they can have their special technology that is proprietary, it's even better. Uh, we talked about this today. You don't think they're going to release this W1 thing to other retailers, right? No, I don't think so. Partnerships with Bose or with... Uh, what do they have in the store? They're the, I think it's BW or something. Yeah, no. Or something. Yeah, no. Yeah. No, I don't think they're going to share that because Apple is not in the game of making other people's device better. It's in the game of making their device better and keeping their margin high enough so that they can get a big profitability from that. So, yes, there could be some business to be made by selling the W1 chip, but if they acquired a company, like I said earlier, and they use they leverage they leverage that technology to make something 
so special, so unique, I don't think that the idea of selling it would appeal to them because it just makes their hardware better. And it just reinforces the fact that by using the software and the hardware together, that they both are controlling 100%, they can do something that is not possible by other uh, phone vendors or device vendors. And I'm not sure how big this box is that contains the headphones. I don't know if I'm, if it's small enough to carry around in your pockets all day. Or I think so. I think it's like a tic tac box, but a bit a bit wider. Okay. Because of the thickness. T- take your white earbud and cut the cord. That's basically the size of the the earbuds. So. Right. So maybe you can carry it around. It's like the huge key fobs we have for cars right now. Yeah, I don't think it's worse than that in a few keys. So, shouldn't be such a big problem. Okay, so that that might be interesting. Yeah. And also in the iPhone 7, there's the new A10 Fusion. So basically what Apple did this time is that they kept the battery size the same, we think. We will have to wait for iFixit to do a teardown to be sure. Yeah, probably like first thing tomorrow morning when they release the phone, there's going to be an iFixit out. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So... Somebody in Australia in a couple of hours even is going to have this out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I, I'm thinking, I think that I fix it in Germany, so they probably have already partners that in can Australia. get them. Yeah. yeah, I think that tonight they were doing some live uh, teardown. So I don't know which device it was. Probably the Didn't AirPods no, or the, the AirPods iPhone. aren't available. No, true. It's October, right? Yeah, they said October. Yeah, next month. Okay. Yeah, so the A10, uh, the phone itself is the same size, the same design from the outside except for the antenna bands, and a few things we'll get to next. The inside is basically the same battery, new camera, so how come you can get two extra hours of battery on the 7? And I think it's about the same or close to an hour on the 7 Plus. Well, Apple did something quite interesting and quite smart, is that in the A10 Fusion chip, they actually have four cores, two high power core, which are used for your regular uh, high energy, high uh, calculation requirements for like games or animations or transitions. And when you're like in mail, for example, or iMessage, just doing little thing that requires no power, they switch to a second set of cores that is low uh, power and consumes a lot less energy. Uh, these tasks that you can do, which require no special translation or animations, uh, there's a lot of those in your usage during the day. And that's how, with a regular usage, you can get two extra hours of battery, which is not negligible. And also, that's the first generation of that idea. There's a new controller they developed just for that. So I'm expecting that this will get even better in the coming years because the power cores will be even more powerful and the low energy core will get also power, more powerful. So eventually, everything that is not a game could run on the low power core. And just like the games or the 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 high end animations would run on the uh, high power core. So theoretically, if you're not a gamer, you could probably get like an extra 50% of battery life in a year or two with that technology. It's, it's like they do with cars. They turn off cylinders on the highway and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly the same thing. Okay, so I think as we speak, the iFixit is happening. Oh, let me go. Check. Because they they say that they're buying phones from Tokyo. Okay. And right now it's 10.46 a.m. in Tokyo. So oh. technically the iPhone 7 is... Is already happening. Sold. Yeah. Let's see if they tweet some they tweet something earlier. Okay, no, not yet. Not yet, huh? Nothing. They say soon. But it shouldn't be any minute now. <laughs> Brace yourself. Tear down the coming. The guy from is that Lord of the Rings or he's dressed as no, no, uh, Game that, of Thrones. That's the guy of uh, Game of Thrones, but it's also the same actor that from Lord of the Rings, who was doing Boromir. <laughs> but right now he's he's 
in his uh, Game of Thrones outfit, right? Yes, exactly. With a big uh, screwdriver and AirPods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so after that, uh, what did we learn? The iPhone itself uh, is, like I said, similar design. Uh, the difference there is on the bottom side, there's the no headphone jack, of course. There's also the speaker grill that's still there. But for just for uh, f- for symmetry, they also added uh, like a speaker grill on the left side. But there's no speaker behind it. It's just just for the looks. I'm guessing the mic is in there, maybe? Uh, in one of the holes? Yes, you're right, because there's also one mic for the... Uh, for when you're, you're talking on the phone. So it's probably one of those whole still used for the mic, but the rest is just for uh, for uh, aesthetics. We're all going to see that in the, uh, the iFixit reviews. Uh. Oh, yes, with details and high-resolution pictures. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and another thing I forgot about the the AirPods. Yeah. You remember the original iPod commercials, the silhouette? Yes. They, they did uh, one of those. I don't know. I don't remember who. I'll try to find it. Uh, the same videos, but with AirPods in the ears, and the the AirPods just fly out because the way they dance. Not and from not from Apple, so. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was a parody. It was a parody. Nice. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I think it's. I'll find it. I'll give it. Yeah, I'll... I just found it. Yeah, it's from Conan. <laughs> right. <laughs> Down the drain. Yeah, and uh, the price, they're 159 US. So probably going to be 220, 230 Canadians. Yeah, easily, 229. Yeah. Yes, something like that, yeah. I'm still, I'm very curious to try them. Uh, normal, normal ear pods don't fit in, I think, my right ear. There's one ear that doesn't, it just doesn't work. It always falls. Okay. But, People are saying that this one, they hold better, so we'll see. Well, the cable always tugs them to the bottom, to the to the ground, so maybe right. that was your problem. Uh, people saying that uh, without cable, they're going to fly around. I don't think so. Uh, I have probably never lost an earbud from, my, from the wired version uh, or any kind of uh, wire because they were just falling off. It's always when I get hooked on something like a, like a, I don't know, like a kitchen door or something that they just get hooked around near my my belt and they fly out. So I'm not scared about this losing them. Okay, I um, can't walk with them on; they always fall out because of the wire, or not no, just from walking. Oh yeah, yeah. The re- I think it's. I'm pretty sure it's the right ear. I keep. I have to keep putting it back in all the time. Okay. Like pressing it back in because it's fall it falls out. Okay. Well. So I have weird ears that don't fit AirPods. I have weird thumbs that don't work with Touch ID. Jeez, you should get a Samsung Note. I'm just a mess. <laughs> 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 all right. So continuing on the changes on the iPhone, there's the new speaker for uh, the top of the phone, which is also now a second speaker for when you're uh, listening to music or videos. So the speaker will be much more powerful and you can have now stereo sound coming from the speakers. They're not as powerful as the Baby Pro speakers, but they are still supposedly much, much more powerful than before. I'm curious to see Marco Arment's uh, special fix he did for uh, podcast playing on the speakers. So we actually fixed the EQ so that they sound better. So with those new powerful speakers, what will that do? So I'm curious to see. The uh, Touch ID and Home button is now not a button. It's now just sensible to pressure, like the trackpads on the latest MacBook Pros and the MacBook. So this one has received some positive and negative yeah. reviews. Yeah, it's pretty mixed. Um, many people feel that it feels fake when you actually press on it. Uh, you don't feel the button. You feel the v- bottom of the phone, the phone vibrating. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that we'll, we'll have to see for ourselves because it's really person by person. Uh, there's three settings. Yeah. Of intensity for it to vibrate. 
But look, so looking at the thing. photos from Phil's uh, presentation, you can see that the Taptic engine is on the left side of the phone. And I'm pretty sure that just because of the placement, this makes a big difference. Because if you look at the press shots for the MacBook Pros, the Taptic engine is actually super centered. So that's why when you press on the new MacBook Pro trackpad, you can fake a real feeling click because it's centered and it's balanced and if you click on the left on the right it's always perfect but in the phone if it's the whole thing that vibrates and the whole thing is in your hand that will feel weird so i don't think that they did it right this year yeah they, they need to get the taptic engine right under the home button yes and, s- and probably just under the home button yeah probably two different taptic engine one large for the new APIs and for what they want to do with uh, big vibra- vibrations, but probably a second small one right under the home button. So we'll probably see that next year so that we actually feel that the, the vibration is coming from the button and not from anywhere else. So um, We forgot to say about the headphones again. Uh, included in the box, they have a pair of air ear pods the wired ones but they're instead of using the audio jack they're going to use the lightning yep and to the big surprise i think they also added a the adapter from lightning to 3.5 in the box in every iphone so. yeah people were saying either that they were not going to do that because they are future focused and not past focus so like when they removed the uh, disk drive for, from uh, the iMac, the color iMac, they didn't give they one didn't external super in the, drive. Yeah, in the box. You could still buy one, but you had to pay for it and it was expensive. So this time they do something different. They include one in the box, which will probably be the only time they do that. Next year you won't see that. And you can also purchase extras for nine bucks, which is the same price as the MagSafe 1 to MagSafe 2 adapter you get for Thunderbolt Display. So it they actually charge you for that, but it's like a low enough price that it's you can get like a second or third one without really thinking about it. It's not like if it was thirty bucks, which would have been quite a pain in the ass, but this is pretty nice. Uh do we have something else? The the rest is little details like there's a new LT advanced chip to go up to four hundred and fifty megabits per second. Um that it's water resistant and dust resistant, mostly because they did the change on the home button. Because this, we already had like a Samsung phones and HTC phone which had a, a, a headphone jack and was water resistant. So that's not a reason for not doing that before. It's probably more the uh, the uh, home button. So that's basically it for the iPhone. So new colors, new black, which is a matte black new jet black which is a shiny one the gold the rose gold and the uh, gray so that's silver yeah. silver yes sorry yeah i thought i was i was thinking in there i thought there was a, like a space gray i was like really i didn't see that one no no no. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay yeah the white and silver one so and also a good thing is that he he did a joke on stage that they started at 16 gigs and end up at the 64 gigs but uh he he, he actually joked about it no did no what, what they did is that they actually took like the 16 to 64 gigs from the 6s plus and the 6s model and they doubled it to 32 all the way to 128 so the 7 is 32 128 256 and they're keeping uh, on sale the old 6s and 6s plus but they doubled the capacity, so they learn. I, like, I don't like the fact that they skip like this sixty four now. I find it weird. Yeah, because sixty four is kind of what people need. Thirty two is just a bit small, especially with the four K video capture. That's crazy fast how it fills your your space. And one twenty eight is probably too big for most people. But I just see, find it weird. That, uh, that, I don't know. That's just Since marketing. They did sixteen sixty four instead of sixteen thirty two sixty four. Why don't they do thirty two sixty four one twenty eight? I don't know. 
I don't know. I just, yeah, 256. It's not incremental anymore like it used to be. Yeah, and 256 is quite quite a lot. I don't unless yeah, I would say it's probably for more for videographers. I have 256 on my laptop. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not even full. Yeah, but you don't do 4K video capture on your laptop. Oh, so. but I do a lot of selfies in photo booth. <laughs> yes, but your selfie don't do one <laughs> one gig per minute. <laughs> so think about it: one gig per minute. So 128 is only two hours of recording, minus all your apps. So it's less than two hours of recording. And yeah. if you're on the run and you do more than half a day of shooting, you can get that two hours filled pretty quickly. So that's why the 256 is pretty useful. There's a couple of things I'm surprised we didn't see. Like, um, I'm surprised they didn't upgrade the five gigs they gave us on iCloud. Yeah, It wasn't a rumor anywhere, but I just, I don't know. I expect it to go to 10 gigs at least someday. Or at or when least. when you purchase a new phone, you give me another five gigs. I don't know. Or, or just five gigs per device. Because a lot of people have an iPhone, an iPad, and a Mac. Yeah. You can get 15 gigs for that. Of course, you... Maybe your, your your iPad you use it less, so you have a smaller backup, but your phone you use it more and you have a bigger backup, so that would just even out. But they're nope. taking bigger pictures, they're they're making bigger internal phones with bigger internal memory and I don't know, I just I expect iCloud to follow, but yeah. it's not following. The only thing they did is they added a new tier on iCloud so you can get two terabytes now. Yeah. Instead of one. So for those who already filled their one terabyte, that's good. Um, also, there's no, they didn't include like the Baby Pro has the sweet screen there. Uh, what's it called? True Tone display. Yeah, yeah no the True rumors, Tone. Not but the rumors, but they, they're they saying it's because the sensors take too much place Yeah, on the front, on the forehead of the iPad. Yeah, there would be like a second like camera size hole on the right, which would make no sense. Especially on the white models where you see the uh, the camera, the sensor and everything. Yeah. But you still get the high color gamut screen. So you can also, with the new cameras, you can capture high color gamut photos. So you capture vivid greens and oranges, and you can see on the phone. That actually makes a difference. So that will, that will be the first camera with that kind of color capture. So that's something very nice. From what we've seen since the, 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 the event ended, there has been a few exclusivity with different uh, news outlet. Uh, one was a guy doing the football photography with an iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. Yeah, Sports Illustrated. Yeah, so that was a nice one. Of course, there was outside in full sunlight where the iPhone cameras is already quite amazing for the last couple of years. But uh, what I'm looking forward more was something which is has less light and we were actually served by something pretty cool from let me get his name because i don't have a good memory renee ritchie no 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 no. better than that <laughs> it's uh it's, 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 it's where is he because renee ritchie posted photos on twitter of yeah uh low light pictures that look pretty awesome too yeah it's austin man who is a video grapher that usually travels the world he did uh, the past years he did the uh, special videos uh, in Iceland, and this year he went into Rwanda or, or Rwanda to capture video of gorillas. So <laughs> yeah, that's a bit better than Rene Rich on Twitter in New York, <laughs> I think, or something. Yeah, yeah. He, the photos are amazing, and the video was shot uh, using uh, iPhone Seven and iPhone Seven Plus. And also, one thing that's pretty cool is I actually saw it on the first shot. You see, he has the new glyph which I backed on Kickstarter. So, and there's also like a sequence where he, so he shows that he clips on the phone, removes the phone. So I could finally see the, the way that the, the glyph works. And I'm looking forward to get mine uh, once uh, Studio Neat uh, ships it out. So the, the link will be in the show notes. This is a nine minutes video he made, which is pretty nice. So that's a good way of showing up, uh, showing off the the new capabilities of the phone. How did he get the new glyph? Uh, Studio Unit was a partner for this expedition, so they provided him with a bunch of those. 
So there's their logo at the bottom of the article. That's pretty neat. Ha 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 ha. No, no laugh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Suter and Neat are being. They um, they released a new dock and iPhone dock also this week. Yes, it's pretty right. big with this new iPhone thing. Yeah, well, the guys from Suter Neat acquired a few months ago like a CNC machine for other materials, and also a CNC machine for wood. So that's why they were able to make the Apple remote, Apple Siri remote stands for the Apple TV remote. Uh, they did it in the house. They did not order the parts from somewhere. They just ordered the wood and they milled the wood locally and tinted and uh, varnished it, everything. Uh, and they did the same thing for this new material dock. So it's a wooden dock that is a round puck for the Apple Watch and a square slate for the iPhone. Or you can get like a special model that is... Uh, round and you can have both the Apple Watch in front of the uh, iPhone. So it's either iPhone plus watch or iPhone separately. Do uh, you have the the um, Apple TV remote stand, right? No, the not, thing? not the stand. No. What I ended up using is Elago makes a rubber case, a silicone case for the remote, which has two magnets on the back. So I just stick my remote to the TV directly okay so this way it's always on hand it's never like between cushions or anything it's always there so and also i've seen some horror stories of people sitting on the remotes and cracking it because the front face is a is made of glass now so it's actually breakable and supposedly quite easily so just so i don't have to spend 70 bucks on a remote i keep it on tv and my kids learn that that's where the remote goes you start your movie you put it there (laughs) So, yeah, just just a few little thing about the material duck. Uh, even though it's a watch and a phone duck, it's actually adjustable. So you can move the uh, lightning connector up and down, and you can move the uh, cork uh, support back and forth. So if you have like a big case, like an auto box, or if you have like no case, uh, you can just move it around and you'll get a perfect fit. And they also included the micro suction on the bottom. So the exact same way that the elevation duct works, where you have like a little uh, rubber on the uh, on the bottom side that actually grips to the desk, they have the same thing there too. The only difference here is that it's mostly made from their garage and it looks pretty amazing. But then again, it's 70 bucks for both. And the shipping... To Canada is not the cheapest one, so it's it's not not very fun for that. Yeah, shipping stuff to Canada is never fun. Yeah, it's still twelve bucks. So if you got a few things to order, it shouldn't be too bad. But for only one single thing, especially the the Apple TV remote stand, which was fifteen bucks, when you have twelve bucks of shipping, it's not super fun. <laughs> what else did they not mention in the keynote? Uh, a bunch of little details, but nothing, nothing worth mentioning, really. No, really, nothing. Well, nothing comes to mind. They didn't talk a second about Max. <laughs> no. no new Max. <laughs> yes, but who who said something? Was it Tim Cook or Phil Schiller that gave a statement after the fact that please uh, hold on, some like we're close to something or. We'll just wait very soon or something like that. So they're probably alluding to an October event like they did in the past, which would be like a Mac-only uh, event or maybe Mac and iPads. But if they have that new MacBook Pros with the little touch uh, bar, which is a screen also, that would be quite amazing. And they will probably spend some time on that. Probably a new video for the manufacturing, a new Johnny I video for the design. And that's MacBook Pro, MacBook Airs, MacBook maybe again. We'll see. And also the Mac Pro is now 1,000 days old. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Well, no. (laughs) (laughs) 
not really if you want one now. It's like not a good time to buy. And if you're you have to buy one because of your work or if your old one broke down and you need new one, uh, basically you're pretty screwed because it's a three year old computers with a full full price tag. So. So what? Oh yeah, you all you posted this week a Milanese loop review from oh, your yes. uh, the band that you got as a gift. Yes, you even took some pretty picture from a old wooden table. So it's a work office, work yeah. desk. Yeah, it looks pretty nice for the photos. So yeah, it's nice for photos. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's not nice for your hands. <laughs> no, it's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. All right, so that was it for this week. So you can find the show notes at rgba.fm slash 20. And you can find us on Twitter. I'm Valia, V-A-L-L-I-E-R-E-S. And I'm Tyler Menard, T-Y-L-E-R-M-E-N-A-R-D. And you can also find on rgba.fm website. There's a contact page. You can send us an email, send us some feedback. Don't be shy. We like feedback. And give us a review on iTunes. Goodbye for this week. Ciao.